Welcome back guys to STP Buddies, another live, another Q&A. Um, I'm Anthony and let's begin. Today we're going to be talking about getting onto the STP. I'm going to share the platform with a couple of STP students. We have Darius today, we have Holly today and we also have um, another guest, um, Rebecca. Rebecca um, from a uh, clinical biochemistry background. So I'm going to be sharing the platform with a few guests, a few new guests today. Thank you guys for all of the support so far. Um, we started this platform, me and a couple other of my colleagues started this platform um, just two months ago. And literally, we understand how it's like to be on the SCP. We understand how it is to apply for the STP. many of us several times, in fact. So we thought, hey, why don't we actually give back? There's loads of students, especially in this pandemic. They don't really know what next step to take. Um, they see the opportunities that the STP has to offer. Um, so this platform is a student-led platform. And what we're doing here is just trying to give back to students, give back to people like yourself listening from all different backgrounds, all diff different um, academic backgrounds. And we're here to just show and showcase the platform of STP Buddies, the STP Pathway, students, real students, actually working on the programme, things that you don't often get to see. So this is what STP Buddies is all about. We're friendly, we are interactive, and we're just about just sharing information of what it's actually like to be a trainee clinical scientist. My name, if you don't know it, is Anthony. I'm the founder of STP Buddies Network. And each month or so, I grab a couple of students, a couple of people I, I know, some that I don't know, um, friendly individuals to sit down with me and have a quick chat. I can see loads of people get, getting in, give us a wave. Am I sounding okay? Am I sounding good? Give me a thumbs up if I am. And we're gonna start in a minute, okay? So we're gonna have three guests. Um, the live will be available on YouTube um, as of tomorrow. Thank you, thank you, Fabian, thank you. Hello guys, hello. Um, and I see a couple of STP trainees in the comments already. So um, if I can't answer any questions, I know that they'll be able to answer some questions today. Today we only have an hour, so I'm gonna go right in. We're gonna jump right in. I've seen already one of my guests, uh, Darius, so I'm gonna invite him in. We're gonna have a quick informal chat about his background, and then we're gonna try to break down the key features of the personal specification and figure out how you can best tailor your application for whatever specialism you're currently aiming towards okay so that's what we're doing today we have myself i'm cardiac first year scp student and we have three other guests today as well any questions please put them through the instagram question questioning before each guest leaves the platform we're gonna ask and we'll just run through some quick questions um with them before they leave and again this will be available on youtube if you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe, then come back to the live, okay? Um, I've seen all of those funds up, so it's good. So we're ready to get cracking. So I'm just inviting our next guest or first guest that Yes, it's been recorded. Thumbs up. I'm liking the thumbs up. We're going to get cracking. Hi. So um, for people that you don't know, I'll give a quick introduction. Um, I, again, if you're just joining, my name's Anthony. What we're doing today, we're talking about two things. We're kind of highlighting current students on the STP pathway, what it's actually like to be on the STP program, their experiences, training in a pandemic, and then we're going to focus on actually the current changes to the application process, the personal specification, and what you can do to tailor your application. My first guest, we have Darius. Darius, would you like to introduce yourself, give a little bit of background about, you know, where you're coming from, you know, what type of pro a program and training you're doing on the STP, and what's currently motivating you on the STP program? Um, getting you through training in the pandemic? Oh, uh, hi guys. Uh, my name is Darius. Um, I'm a first year neurophysiology um, trainee. Um, I did my undergrad um, in pharmacology and physiology 
um, at Kent, uh, during which I did like a one year placement. Uh, I worked in pharma. And then after uni, I worked for a year um, at the Homerton Hospital in London uh, in uh, sickle cell and thalassemia service as a social liaison. So working with a psychologist, help the patients with their social issues. And then uh, this year, I started the STP. Um, motivating me through the pandemic, it's tough because I'm, I've been redeployed um, okay. to a different kind of space which I'm not very much accustomed to, but I mean, if anything, it's making me appreciate uh, nurses and doctors a lot more and HCAs. And uh, it helped me appreciate how lucky I am to be on the STP and have my, my opportunity to do my training. So is the STP currently living up to the expectations you've had before applying or has it changed? Um, you know, I don't. I don't think you can ever have a a, a good enough idea of exactly how it's gonna be. It's definitely um, beating my expectations in some aspects. It's definitely a lot harder than what I thought in some aspects. But I think all in all, like, I'm happy to be on it and I'm enjoying the process so far, taking each day as it comes. Yeah, um, I definitely agree with you on that side. Um, especially taking it each day as it comes. Um, because for me, it's lived up to the expectation that it is challenging. It is a challenging program. Um, we're doing a master's, but we're working full time. And in the middle of a pandemic, a lot of our training has stopped. Some people are being redeployed. Um, I myself, I'm starting ITU tomorrow for the first time. Um, certain kind of rotations have stopped. But one thing that we mentioned on our last STP Buddies talk, something that we'll probably touch upon now with, with a couple of the guests is being adaptable um, that's something that I've had to do you've probably had to do I can see you nodding yeah. and um, some of the STP trainees in the comments watching um, are probably kind of nodding their heads in their rooms currently and um, that's something that is reflective in the current application process for people who don't know there's been a couple of changes um, quite a few changes in fact um, one of the major changes being that they've actually scrapped the numerical and logical reasoning tests. Now, these tests are gone. Um, a lot of us probably would have wanted to do this current um, uh, testing compared to the one that we had, but hey, that's out of the way. So we're gonna kind of break that down and talk through how you can best prepare. Um, I attended the National School of Healthcare Science um, webinar last week. I was in there and Essentially, the SJTs are the new form of testing for direct trainees. This is um, um, a situational judgmental judgment test. And what they do, they give you different scenarios about um, patients and being in a patient-facing role. Um, so that's what the focus is after getting your application. So we'll touch on that a bit later, a bit with Darius and a couple of the other guests. But today we're going to focus more on the personal specification um, and take it from there. And then we'll ask some few questions before um, Darius leaves the stage. How does that sound, Darius? Does that sound cool? Yeah, it sounds good. Sounds good. All right, cool. So we're going to split the personal specification into chunks. And we're going to first start with um, the scientific skills. Um, and we're just going to kind of go through scenarios to see if myself and Darius were applying today, what sort of things we would put down, what sort of examples, the most questions, the most popular questions that I've been sent, we've been receiving through our email is, how do I show ev evidence? I don't have enough experience. I may not have enough clinical experience. The pandemic hit, um, I, was, I was forced to work, work, from, work from home, study from home. How can I get above this? So this is what we're going to be going through today. Um, so one of the ones that I picked out was um, this, uh, commitment, in-depth interest to scientific practice uh, and its applications um, to direct clinical care. So basically, how do you show your interest to actually get onto the STP? From your experience, if you kind of take your mind back to when you were applying, you're in the um, neurophysiology specialism. I know you had the interest for cardiac as well. What key things related to your science skills or experience, were you thinking about, were you actually writing down um, to sell yourself on that, on that side? Mm. Well, that's a good question. Um, for me, like, I was lucky, lucky enough to do a whole 
a one year placement uh, during my undergrad, which I did um, at GSK. So obviously I was able to use that experience, but I think the advice I would give to anyone that hasn't had that opportunity is that you've done an undergraduate degree, right? So you need to place an emphasis on what you've done during that program. Even if you haven't done any volunteering or any additional things, I mean, you have to do a research project at the end of it. You have to do a dissertation. So I'd say discuss your interest in that, discuss the efforts you made to make sure that, that was gonna be the best project it can be, how you collaborated with lecturers, PhD students, other people in your tutor group. Um, and if you, had a, if, you had, if you did have the opportunity to do a placement, I'd say hone in on exactly what you learned in that space. For me, I didn't actually work in a clinical role in my placement. It was more of an operations, you know, setting up clinical trials. So not many clinical skills were adapted there. But clinic, when, when you work in, in the SDP and the NHS, you have to be able to work with people. So that's a skill you can hone on. You have to be able to manage different personalities, egos. You have to be able to manage your time. You have to be relatable to staff. So I think it's not necessarily that you must have clinical experience in the NHS or elsewhere. It's able to kind of take the skills you've developed, I don't know, working at Sainsbury's, working at other people there, time management, efficiency, attention to detail, and conveying it and explaining to them how you would use it in a clinical setting. Um, one thing that you, you mentioned was transferable skills. My first time applying for the SCP, I didn't have as much clinical experience as I, as I, as I have now. So I was really thinking about what have I done in labs um, as an undergraduate? What kind of examples um, of coursework, collaborative work, working in a team, can I actually put down um, regarding my BSc? The majority, a large majority of people applying have some form of undergraduate degree or equivalent in a science-based subject. So it should be relatively easy for you to kind of maybe jot down some points or some things that you've you've done in the past and transferable skills are very important that's why this year they've actually focused on um, applicants choosing one specialism over two um, so they're actually trying to make it a bit easier and clearer for you to actually formulate your application from um, the writing and from kind of prioritizing what experience you, you put on your on the cv part of the application as well so i yeah. think transferable skills are very important um, if i pick something else um, this was quite interesting. Still on the science side of the personal specification, um, here we have an ability to make judgments, uh, clinical judgments involving facts or situations. Um, so when we're thinking about showing our ability to maybe critically think, um, make decisions on the spot, from your experience then or now, what sort of things do you think that they would like to see from an applicant? Mm. Um, I'd say because it's a science related question, definitely honing in on when you've done this in science. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna give advice based on an individual who hasn't had an opportunity to do clinical experience or any work experience and say that even in your undergrad, you have to make a decision, um, in your dissertation, you have to make a decision. It, is this part of the, my research study working? Do I have to adapt it? Or did it work the whole way through? How am I going to use these results? How am I going to present it? And I think generally, I think all of us will have some sort of experience in some way or another personally where we've had to make decisions. Even, go, even going to uni, you're going to take several L's where you're going to have to make quick decisions and understand how you're going to navigate your adulting kind of thing. So but I mean, cl clinically, scientifically, I think an example you could use is when, when you've been given responsibilities in, in your work placement, in a lab, and something goes wrong with the investigation. Do you go to a supervisor? Do you try to sh troubleshoot yourself? Alternatives, I don't know, you can be a student ambassador. You know, something's gone wrong with the tour. How did you decide it? I think it's more about how you can show that you can do these things. Because the SDP is very much about teaching you from ground zero. I mean, even if you have all the experience in the world, we kind of all start off at the same place. So I think manipulating and adapting your life experiences to that, when you've had to make a tough decision, personally, academically, professionally, I think will be valuable. Okay, thank you for that. Um, again, we we're limited on time, unfortunately, so we're just going to jump into a couple of questions um, mm -hmm. and we'll try to both give our perspectives. Okay. Do, 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 do. 
So this is a question, I hope you can see it. I've put it on the screen. This is a question that I've seen a lot. Um, I've got several emails on this. Any tips? Thank you, Don, Lucy. Any tips for the physical requirements of the application? Thank you so much. So Doris, before you answer that, um, I'll just give you a little bit of background regarding that. Um, the physical requirements of the, um, that they specify in the personal specification are things such as, you know, you should be able to um, kind of manual hand handling, et cetera. Um, again, thinking of, okay, how can I best, how can the current people listening best sell themselves? What sort of things, maybe from your background in neurophysiology, would you be thinking about? Yes, I can get across um, these physical requirements that they're speaking of. That's an interesting question. I mean, there isn't a lot of manual handling in, in, uh, involved in neurophys, except for if like a patient has a seizure or something like that. Um, I mean, I, I don't, from my perspective and my experience in the application, it, it wasn't a, a point that I placed any emphasis on really. But if an applicant did want to do it, I'd suggest, you know, we, we, we've had to do, you have to do manual handling as part of your induction into the NHS. Especially with COVID-19, I've had to learn manual handling be, having been redeployed. So I'd say in any capacity where you've helped out your family, an ill family member, you've looked after children, manual handling is essentially being able to support a patient from wherever they're going or carry boxes. So I think any experience you've had supporting people that don't have capacity to do something physically will benefit you, whether that's a family member, whether it's during volunteering, whether, whether that's a friend that's broken their leg. I think if you'd like to involve in your application, that would be good. Okay, I think that was a good question. Um, if you worry about not getting... Okay, so this is probably a good one. Um, we'll take this as the last one and then we'll invite our next guest. So Darius, do you worry about not getting a clinical science job straight away? Hmm. I think, I think before, when I got into the SDP and before I started, before things started getting heavy, you know, I was really thinking about HSST and all these other things. <laughs> and I've had to like... <laughs> After doing it for a few months, I've had to, like, kick back and just <laughs> take each day as it comes. Yeah, um, the HST is five years. Yeah, yeah. So, um, to be honest, I'm not worried about getting a job because I think, you know, um, we're working in a field that's always going to be required or always going to be needed. Um, my only worry is where. Because I think neurophysiology is a niche, is a niche field. Mm. And if I want to carry on working in the NHS as opposed to the private sector... I'd like it to be in London, but obviously it's a very small pool of people. So we will see, but I'm not worried about oh, when I finish, I won't get a job at all. It's just location. Okay. Thank you. Um, again, we're short on time, but thank you very much. Before you go, you have a platform. Um, please share that platform um, so the people watching can kind of interact with what you're doing, in, you know, which is an extension of the STP as well. Yeah. Um, so myself and some other trainees, uh, we kind of, during the summer, came together and we developed a, um, a BAME STP group. And essentially, we have a few aims, the first of which is to support trainees uh, in their experience with the STP. It's, it's not easy. Um, you will ex you, it's likely that you will experience some discrimination. It's not something that we can control. Um, the second thing is that we work really hard with the school... The School of Healthcare Science to to lobby for curriculum changes because we understand the history of racism in science, how science has been used, and how people have been manipulated. So, and we we believe that in order to provide the best care to our patients now, we need to understand the history of of science in order to be the best care providers. And I think the third thing is to you know, we it came to light you know the school finally released the data about how discriminative the process is, you know, it's, it's completely swung one way where white, white applicants succeed at a far higher rate. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to go into secondary schools, universities, colleges, to reach out to more people, make them more aware of the program, program and then provide support for them in order to kind of put forward their best footing. We're trying to work with them to 
have a more diverse portfolio of, of people shortlisting answers or people conducting interviews. Yeah, we're just trying to make it a more equitable profession. Um, Excellent. So, so where hopefully. can people find you? Where can people find and interact uh, with the platform? Because before, for example, this would be something, um, especially when showing your actual interest or um, relating maybe the personal specification to science and innovation, these sort of things, these sort of platforms, being aware of them will kind of, will do leaps and bounds for your application. So where can people find your network, your platform? Yeah, so we, our Twitter is called Bame Scientist Network. Can't quite remember the app, but I'll put it in the comments. Uh, yeah, and I've yeah. already put the Bame, um, I believe it's your sign-up form in the yeah. STP Buddies um, bio on the Instagram page. Whether you're watching on YouTube or Instagram right now, after this, go click on it, get involved, um, contact Darius through the network. And again, that's um, another thing that you can put on the application or just be aware of come interview and this will be quite something important for you to actually sell yourself and make yourself quite unique um so that's all we have time for for darius i've been seeing the likes you've been getting a lot a lot of love and people really appreciate what you do and you're doing quite amazing work um both of us both being just in first year, first year so um keep it up and yeah keep your head down in the the lockdown period i'll be doing the same thank you anthony it was nice right. to come on all right cheers take nice. care So I'm just going to go ahead straight away to take on the next guest. Because we're limited on time, we're just going to we're just going to move straight away. So Hello. Hi. Hello. Nice to meet you. Um, my name is Anthony. Um, how are you today? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. I was saying, yeah, I can't believe how many people you've got, how many viewers. Yeah. Well. <laughs> yes, the SCP, you know, you know how competitive it is, extremely competitive. And um, when we're just from a student to student level, we're just giving out information and making sure people see so many different faces. Uh, thankfully, a lot of people are interested and as to why you're here today. Um, so please give the viewers, myself as well, educate us about who you are, your, your clinical background, how you've become the scout scientist, mm -hmm. and also what's motivating you today in your clinical practice. Okay, so hi everyone. My name is Holly Ellis um, and I'm a clinical scientist in genetics. Um, so I um, did my undergrad at Oxford um, in biological sciences and then after this I did a master, well what I actually did was I came home from uni and I wasn't quite sure what to do um, and I applied for the STP first time round and I was unsuccessful. Um, so after that I thought well what do I need to do and I did realise actually although I applied for genetics um, I didn't really have that much genetics experience so I didn't really know a lot about it the first time round. So I started as a volunteer um, in a genetics lab at Liverpool Women's Hospital. Um, and then from there I got a band three job. Um, and then finally the second time round I was successful um, on gaining a place on the STP. So I finished the STP actually in um, 2019 and I am now... Um, a clinical scientist in genomics and I'm actually a training Congrats. officer well thank you <laughs> um so since finishing the STP I started my own YouTube channel and social media platforms as the Scout scientist um just to try and um, eliminate the stereotypes associated with scientists because you know a lot of the time we see scientists on TV and in the media and like yeah. Darius was saying, that often the white, middle class, and typical male with a posh accent. <laughs> um, and, you know, when I tell people I'm a scientist, they're always a bit 
gobsmacked because of my accent and my looks and things like that. So really, I just want to eliminate those stereotypes and show mm. that science is for everyone and also to just increase the awareness of, of the STP and clinical scientists in general. Wow. Um, so that's amazing. And even before applying, I've kind of seen your journey from kind of following people that were on the STP um, before I was. And it's quite inspirational um, that just being yourself, being your authentic self um, and showing that to the world, people have actually um, kind of supported you and other media platforms such as the BBC and other kind of um, news platforms have collaborated with you and your work. So one, congratulations on that side and also congratulations on actually finishing the program. Um, something that um, myself and a lot of the trainees in the comments um, are probably looking forward to doing in the next two and a half years or so. Um, something that spoke out to me was within your journey, you were authentic to your own interests and with the current application, the current STP application, focusing now more than ever on the personal specification, um, students are questioning, how do I sell myself? One, with maybe a lack of experience, but two, maybe I don't know too much about genetics or cardiac physiology or bioinformatics. We really want to kind of today establish that with what you have, you can make the most out of it. So from your experience, from students even coming to you, what sort of key things would you encourage applicants this year to focus on in terms of selling themselves from an academic perspective and an experience perspective? Yes, yeah, so that's a, a really good question. So my first um, point on that would basically be to don't worry that you haven't got work experience. You know, I've had a lot of people messaging me asking about volunteering in our lab and unfortunately due to COVID um, we're just not accepting any volunteers and I think a lot of labs will be the same so don't worry about that because everyone is going to be in the same boat Um, I think what Darius was saying before was really key and it's about transferable skills and actually linking the skills that you already have back to the STP so you know when you're writing your application form don't just say oh, I did um, a project in this thing during my undergrad. Actually go into what skills that gave you, because, you know, most people will have done a project with an undergrad, um, but it's picking out those key skills. So, you know, I did this um, project and I did this in the lab and this will help me on the STP when doing X, Y, Z and always link it back. So even skills like, you know, you could just say you worked at McDonald's for a year um, and think, oh, well, I'm not putting that on the application form. But it's how you turn that around. So you could just say, you know, I worked in McDonald's for a year. That was it. Or you could say, I worked in McDonald's for a year. Um, I worked with um, a number of different people and built my communication skills, my team working skills. And this will help me on the STP when I'm working in multi multidisciplinary teams and things like that. So it's, it doesn't matter if you've not got, you know, the actual, you haven't got exactly what you maybe would have had if it wasn't for COVID because no one is going to, but it's just really about selling yourself and saying things that are, you know, be yourself and things that are just kind of unique to you because um, you do want to kind of stand out from the crowd. Um, and when you're talking about actually, you know, not always referring to maybe quote unquote clinical experience, I was looking at the personal specification now and one of the spec mentioned uh, being a good active listener, having a good active listening skills to build rapport with listeners and to encourage open discussion. So you may well have done that at your first job. You may have, have done that on your two week um, placement somewhere. It's not about the length, it's not about the duration, it's not about the location. It's actually about where you can show the skills to listen. That means, okay, being empathetic, putting patients first. And like um, you, Holly just mentioned, actually integrating these NHS values into the your application with the personal specification so you're probably going to hear that quite a lot 
personal specification, NHS values, transferable skills, your experience. It can be either clinical and directly relevant if you have it, or it can be from any other experience. The more you can link it back, the easier whoever's going to be looking at your application can say, hey, look, this person knows what they want, they're motivated, and this is a candidate that is ready to actually be on the STP and move to the next stage, which is shortlisting and interviews, um, et cetera. So we'll just pick out um, another question, in fact, because we'll, we have a couple, and let's see if we can both answer them together. Okay, so we have this question from Alice. Thank you, Alice. Any advice on approaching SJTs, for example, what to think about when reading the scenario? Um, is that for me? Because so I didn't actually know that the um, thing, the criteria changed. Because obviously, when we applied, we did the logic tests. Yeah. Um, but on what you were saying before, if it's just like a kind of patient um, scenario and what would you do type of thing, um, then that's actually quite similar to the professional practice side of the STP um, and the final assessment. So. Um, just going off what you, you were saying before, I'd just basically try and think back to the NHS values and um, principles and, you know, basic common sense things like patient confidentiality, um, you know, quality control, um, leadership in the NHS, values, respect, dignity, care, those type of things are all sorts of buzzwords. So if you can get anything like that in, um, then, you know, Definitely do. So I did mention with Darius that last week I was actually um, sitting in on the webinar that the national school um, talked had, and they were talking about the SJTs, and people were asking how do we best apply, and their answer was a bit um, a bit wishy washy to say the least. That mm. you can't really practice for these things, but to a certain extent, it's just the truth. If mm. you take a step back and actually think, okay, what is the best decision for the patient in this situation, then you're most likely going to get um, the answer uh, or the rank of the answer that's the highest compared to if you just thought um, what, what answer is, are they looking for? They're not trying to trick you. They're not trying to um, make you not progress. You actually just need to think about the patient. When was, when was the last time that I went into a hospital or clinical environment um, as a patient? Um, what what would I have liked? What was my experience? If you actually come from that perspective when actually reading the questions, taking time to actually assess them, then your question or your what you think is will be the best answer will probably be more authentic and, and help you that way. So thank you, Alice, for that question. We can go for another one. Uh, okay should we include volunteering em employment under employment history e.g hospital experience uh, what do you think um so should we include volunteering employment yeah if it's if it was you know it doesn't necessarily say paid employment if you were employed in that job um then you know definitely mention it on your application form but i would also say in answer to that question try and if it's kind of um you know you've put hospital experience here in your um question if it's hospital experience i would still write that in the answer to some of your questions so don't think just because it's in you know sort of the admin side of the application form that they're gonna necessarily, you know, look at look at that. Um, obviously, they will look at it, but I would, I mean, like, um, still write about that in your um, answers to the questions. Don't think just because it's in there. You know, same with your undergraduates or any postgraduate degrees. Just because they're in sort of the CV section, don't think that you don't need to put them into your actual answers to the questions as well. Yeah. Um, I don't think there's much to add on that. I think you, you answered that great. And we'll go for maybe two more. Du, 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 du. Okay, so this is quite a good, good one. So this is from Sophia. Thank you, Sophia. 
Would you use the start approach or give lots of short answers to meet all points on the spec? Um, for me, for my first time and second time that I applied for the SCP, this was something that I used. One, it probably helped me in terms of lowering my anxiety to actually formulate the questions. Um, when I started, I had experience here, experience there, academic work, work from you know university. The start method, if people aren't aware, is basically framing maybe a paragraph or maybe one particular question um, with the situation, the task, the action, and the result. Um, and actually embedding what we talked about, i.e. maybe focusing that on one to two personal specification um, points that relate to one point and having that framework to actually help you get down or get straight to the point what, what you've done. Um, so for, that definitely helped for me. It doesn't help for everyone, but that gave me structure that I needed to make sure that the points that I started off with, I finished them with a result that would link to being patient-centered, either put, putting patients first, um, or actually showing my motivation to actually be on the SCP or my aspirations for after the SCP, uh, um, what I wanted to do after that. For me in cardiac, I knew I wanted to go into kind of the grown up congenital heart pathway. So I spoke about that in some of my examples. Um, so yeah, this not only helped with the framework, but it also helped me to think further afield what I was going to do after the STP and it probably strengthened my application. Um, for you, would you recommend this? What's your views? Um, well, that's the first time I've ever heard of this star approach. I'm glad you knew what it meant because I've literally never heard of it before. <laughs> but um, it sounds like a good thing and I only wish that I'd have heard of that before. Um, so, yeah, I guess what I would do, which is probably a similar thing, I just didn't know that it was called that, would be to sort of um, always summarise why you've told them a certain thing. So, like you said, if you've written a paragraph, about all the different skills that you've got, um, you know, from a certain experience or a certain project that you did, um, then don't just list all the skills. Or perhaps earlier in the paragraph, you might say what skills you gained from that, but always put in a summary sentence to say, why have you told them that? So how have those skills benefited you? How do they show your enthusiasm for the subject, the passion for the STP, or how will it benefit you? Um, as a clinical scientist in the NHS. So again, just always linking it back. But I'm glad that you, I know about that start approach now. Maybe I'll use that in the yeah. future. Um, and it's something that I've actually used for um, interviews as well, when they give you tricky questions. Um, interviews and the whole process of that, um, we will cover, but probably on a more, um, for a separate live or separate YouTube video, etc. But if you guys want to note it down, star method, throw it into Google um, or interact with some of the actual trainees in the comments or after this or previous students that have been on um, the SCP Bodies Talk series, they'll be able to kind of give you more information about that. And if you do have any questions, um, you can email us at stpbodies at hotmail.com. Um, so before we close with you today, you know, now being outside of the STP um, what are your current thoughts about the STP in terms of um, how it's impacted your kind of your 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 career? Did it live up to the expectations? Did it exceed the expectations? What has your your journey been up to this point? Um, so I think first of all, just getting a place on the STP, I was obviously so pleased because it has an unsuccessful application the first year. Um, and I just want to say as well, don't worry if you don't get on the first time round. You know, not many people do. Um, and then yeah, I guess after that, the first year can be quite tough, especially for you guys during you know the pandemic, the current first years. I actually feel for you because it was hard enough without. Um, having COVID on top of everything. Um, so the first year can be a bit tough to get used to because you're doing a lot of different rotations. You're constantly the new person in a new department, learning about new people and new skills. And then just as you've got to know everyone, then all of a sudden you're in a different rotation.
של... I think we've lost the Sky Scientist. Um, let's see if we can get her on back again. Uh, please be sending your questions still through the actual the question icon. I won't be able to see the comments unless you're asking the current trainees, which I've seen you guys actually responding. So I thank you very much. Uh, thank you for the support. Um, Let's see if we can get her back to just finish off um, what she was speaking about. <laughs> Hello there. I think we we lost you there for a little bit, but you're back now. Sorry, I don't know what happens. Oh no, no, no problem, no problem. Um, so yeah, you're just talking about enclosing your your experience up to this point and kind of reflecting for us at least that it's been difficult. From my perspective, it has been quite difficult. It has been quite challenging. Um, adapting, not really knowing sometimes, okay, what's going to happen in the next three months or so, because the nation doesn't know what's going to happen in the next three months or so. Um, but it's quite funny that over the past couple of weeks or so, I've been looking through the personal specification and these things, they're not just there to just make applicants' life difficult. These are actually things that I'm being forced in a good way to actually do in terms of active listening, being adaptable. Um, my interest in science is the thing keeping me going when I have so many kind of plates to juggle from uh, coursework to practical competencies, um, university assessments, etc. cetera. Um, so I do want the people kind of listening to don't be disheartened or feel um, like they're, so, they're asking a lot. Um, the program is challenging for a reason to actually bring all of these qualities out of you to make you better. And like what you said, um, this is not my first time applying. This was my second time applying. My first time, unfortunately, I didn't get in, um, but I didn't let that stop me or hold me back. Um, in the interim, I got more practical experience. I finished my degree and I applied again. Um, so I want people to bear that in mind also. Um, so before you leave us today, what you're doing with the Sky Scientists is excellent. Um, is there anything you're doing in the future, any events, or is there anything you just want to share with myself and the prospective students listening? Yeah, so um, I started doing school visits again, like Darius was saying he's been doing too, um, just to try and encourage more young people from working class backgrounds or, you know, who go to kind of normal comprehensive schools and, you know, trying to increase the diversity of students um, on the STP and going into careers in science. Um, so I just want to encourage everyone who's watching to, you know, create your own opportunities. There wasn't a job position called the Scout Sciences that I applied for. I just come up with that myself. And equally for you, um, you know, the STP buddies, you've come up with that yourself. And it's, it's obviously doing really well and helping so many people. So the key really is to create your own opportunities. If there's something that you want to do um, that's going to benefit you, that's going to benefit other people, um, then just go for it. Don't wait for something to come along. Just kind of create it yourself wow uh, so that that's quite excellent that's a very good point for us to to finish on thank you for your time thank you for for joining us this evening um i'm sure a lot of students um like myself will be inspired by what you've done and what you'll continue to do actually finishing the stp and um, starting the scarf scientist um so please check her out she has a youtube um, channel and on all the socials give her a follow and yeah, thank you very much and have a good evening as well. I think I just, okay. Cool, make sure you guys are putting in your questions. We have about 15 minutes left. Um, with our last guest, we're just going to go rapid fire and get as much questions as we can out. Um, again, for people that have just joined, we're focusing on one, current students' experiences, you know, 
the faces of, you know, the 21st century <laughs> STP, the 2021 STP. We're here showing people uh, from different specialisms. We've had Darius from um, neurophysiology. We've had the scout scientist from the genetics. And now we're going to bring on our third guest. Hi, how are you? I'm good, thanks. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Uh, my name's Anthony. This is the STP Buddies. Um, please introduce yourself. Kind of give us a little bit of a background about yourself, your background. How did you get to even applying to the STP? And currently on the STP, what's actually motivating you to keep going, keep striving, keep moving forward? So I did my, um, I did an integrated master's in biochem as my undergrad degree and applied in my final year and was really lucky to get accepted. Um, and I did like a week of observing people in a hospital, which it's a shame that that's not possible for a lot of you. Um, but I also like had a chat with the department um, of a hospital and got some really um, good insights from my application about what goes on day to day of a clinical biochemist. Um, so yeah, I, it's a great specialism and I just re I really enjoy um, doing it. It's very heavy, like lab based. Um, and I like the fact that even though I'm not directly involved in patient care, I'm still involved in the patient pathway and like every time you get a result out to a patient it's like you are making a difference um so that's really like a good motivator okay um for the people who don't know you could you give us your name and what specialism you're currently under for the SCP uh so I'm Rebecca and I'm doing clinical biochemistry okay so biochemistry was actually we've done a vote um from the last SCP Buddies talk was very successful. So we kind of asked people, okay, who did, what kind of specialism they actually want? And one of the top ranking ones was actually biochemistry. It's quite unique in the fact that, like you said, it's not necessarily um, patient facing, but your work is directly impacting the lives of patients. When we're having a look now at the personal specification, here, one of the points um, talked about um, being a, an effective team worker, um, willing to adapt your role to working in, in collaboration with others. Um, for yourself, to kind of give current applicants insight, how does that look like for you on your role? And maybe from one experience in your past, um, how have you been collaborative in the past? How have you worked as a team leader in the past? So in clinical bike, um you are working with a lot of different people. You're working with MLAs, you're working with BMSs. Um, so you you do have to like rely on a lot of different people to obviously get the sample processed and get the result. Um, so it's a really like key skill to have. Um, and I showed that in my application. I worked um, as part of a, in a society at uni. Um, so I showed that, like, I worked in a group um, to, like, organise lots of different events. I was the education officer, so I ran a careers fair. So I got to show that I could lead a team um, to pull that off successfully. So you can use lots of different experiences. Like, if you've worked, like, in a supermarket and you've, like, led a small team or something, it's, it's good to show that you have that skill. Okay, thank you. And, again, this is evidence that, um, like Rebecca, a, a lot of us didn't necessarily use all of our application in terms of the writing element to show clinical experience. In, in my um, case, the second time I applied, I made sure that my approach was holistic. So I focused on clinical experience, but the other experience as well, because I made it val valid by what we spoke about with the scout scientists, making it transferable. We have some questions building up, Rebecca. So what we're going to do in the last 10 minutes mm -hmm. that we have, we're just going to go through a rapid <laughs> round of yeah. um, answering these questions. So if you're willing, we'll, we'll just get cracking straight away. So we have the questions yeah, <laughs> flying in. And we have the uh, one that says this. Okay, cool. Okay, so this is from Katie. 
She said, is it better to use a relevant discipline experience in an application or a few different examples? Now, we've just touched on this, but is there anything you would like to add, Rebecca? I think if you've got experience that like directly relates to like the specialism you want to apply, um, especially for like a lab-based specialism, if you've had like good lab experience, I think that's definitely something you should focus on. Um, but I think the more experience you have and like the different perspectives each um, bit of experience has given you um, and how that allows you to like show yourself off in your application. Um, yeah, I think it's it's good to talk about lots of different experiences. Okay, thank you. Nine minutes on the clock. <laughs> what else do we have? Okay, I can answer this. Um, the SJTs, I have some information here, but all of this information, in fact, is in the link of the STP Buddies Instagram. It's going to be on the YouTube. If you're watching on YouTube now, click down below as like <laughs> all the YouTubers say. Um, but yeah, I'll give you some information about the SJTs. So the SJTs are the new aptitude tests that the direct applicants are um, going to take after they send their application. Um, after applications close on the 22nd of February, the deadline to, for the SJTs um, is the 17th of February. I'm currently reading off of the table that is on the National School website. So if you haven't had a look at it, it's up there, it's live now, so you can have a look at it. Um, okay, cool. Eight minutes on the clock. Let's go for something else. <laughs> okay, so this one's probably for you, Rebecca. How do you think we can use goal work experience? I think, I think it's this, actually. How do you think we can use work experience on STP and how can we link it to lab experience so if it's like a lab-based work experience you and um, you've got to like run an experiment or something like that it's it's showing you have the skill to one be in a lab um and two it's like attention to detail um and things like that you can probably use any kind of like any work experience um you just need to be like well i have like good attention to detail skills i can work independently like a lot of the biochemistry role is you running assays by yourself um a lot of the time so you have to be able to like show that off um in the experience you have um to like meet those requirements cool so i'll go for this one we're going back to back what do you think made your application stand out and made your application successful for me i would say what made my application successful um with the actual write-up was one away from what i wrote i didn't just focus on my own ability when it comes to preparing my application um you may have joined the last stp bodies um live we had people like Tim, who is in his third year and currently a co-chair on the London Healthcare Science Training Network. Um, he was a colleague of mine and I showed him my application that, look, this is my draft. What do you think about it? He has had more experience than me um, in, in cardiac physiology. Cardiac is my specialism. What do you think? How can I change it? When your application is done, when, when it's nearly done, I think it will be a good thing to actually involve someone that you trust maybe um it's, it's a superior at your workplace or maybe it's a academic someone who you're friendly with that you have good rapport with at your old university or your parents or older sibling show them that look this is my final piece of work is it good um make sure that there's no s spelling errors these small things once we have you know our best self on there these things can be the difference between um you know, ranking, because for direct entry applicants anyway, it is a matter of rank. We're kind of um, fighting for a limited amount of places. So I would say away from actually first figuring out, okay, what to put on there. Once you've actually achieved that, focus on, okay, look, now is my spelling in check? Um, you know, my, my grandma, um, 
how am I actually getting myself across um, the type of, of writing? I've heard a lot of people mention the word reflective, reflective writing, making sure that the application focus or focuses on myself, as in me, the applicant. Uh, um, you'll be surprised how often, once you kind of get into a flow of things and putting down our academic work, our experience, everything else, we lose ourselves. The application should be reflective of you, your interests, your motivations, your desire to become an STP applicant. So in every sentence or so, make sure that you're linking it, not just back to the patients, but how your experience, your work experience, your desires, your aspirations actually link back to not just the patient, but yourself and your future goals. Um, so yeah, that's my advice from a holistic perspective, looking at the big picture. Um, what do you think, Rebecca? Do you have anything to add? I think you've covered most of it. I think it's important to try and make your application unique and not focus on so much about what you think they want to see. Like you need to use like your own unique experiences and link it in a way that reflects you because otherwise they're going to be reading the same application. If like all you're talking about is like generic lab based projects that you've done that, so many other applicants have like done as well so okay so this question is probably for you what's your favorite part of specializing in uh, biochem for me i really enjoy the fact that biochemistry covers so many different uh, lab tests um and you're dealing with like so many different um organ systems and so many different diseases um like there's so much variety that goes on. Um, so that's something I really enjoy about it. It's every day is not, not quite the same. You're seeing like different results um, across a wide range of conditions. Um, so it makes it really interesting. Okay. Um, if I was to talk about cardiac for me, um, I like the fact that my, the nature of my work is quite varied um, in the fact that each day I can be using different skills. I can be working in across different hospitals, um, serving patients in different ways. Sometimes it's patient facing when I'm performing ECGs, 12 lead ECGs, fitting um, portable ECGs, so Holter monitors on patients, less now, of course, because we're in the pandemic. Or sometimes we're away from patients and we're actually analyzing these Holters and we're, I'm using kind of more analytical skills to pick out um, uh, changes in their heart rate and rhythm which have, I find quite enjoyable because it's a task where you sometimes have to work in isolation um, and that's completely different from when I'm working in a team and we're dealing with patients who may have chest pain shortness of breath and we need to figure out quickly what heart rate and rhythm they're, they're in in a more collaborative environment um, so yeah for cardiac it's quite varied it is fun you do work in a team but you have opportunities to work um, individually as well um, and then you have the university side where you know our skills probably Rebecca you can kind of um, agree with this as well that we've got from previous degrees previous experiences we're still having to use we're still having to develop we're still tr having to actually read literature engage in it write reports and that's challenging as well but the fact that we finish and we're able to register as clinical scientists, that we're able to actually um, finish the, pro the program and um, get a master's as well is are things which are motivating me and will most likely be motivating a lot of the trainees listening yeah. as well. Um, so with what you're doing, your journey, you created a platform. What... Um, can people see of you next in the with what you're doing or what kind of things are you looking forward to do uh so i'm just looking forward to like sharing my journey through the sdp like when i applied i couldn't find any information about like the day-to-day -day life of a clinical biochemist there just wasn't anything out there so i want to try and make it accessible so that other people can kind of understand the specialism a bit more um gain some insight that they can put into their application. Um, and I'm always uh, open for questions. Um, if anybody has any questions about clinical biochemistry or the application process. And um, a lot of what Rebecca said, this is what STP Buddies is about. Well, um, soon to come to a close, 
Instagram is going to close this quite soon. Um, but the last point is, this is what STP Buddies is about. I, I didn't know as much as I know now. I didn't have the network that I know now, um, that I have now, sorry. And my, my belief um, is part of my faith. In fact, actually just show case these people and I can do so quite easily so I thought okay why not if it's going to help one person is it going to help two pers people if it's going to help a hundred people like like we've um, um, had today then it's going to be worthwhile so expect from the STP Buddies Network more people more guests on Instagram on YouTube make sure you're subscribed to our YouTube channel or on LinkedIn or on Twitter everywhere every social media platform we're there and you're going to see faces like myself Faces, friendly people like Rebecca, like Darius, like the Scout Scientists, um, their stories, but also these voices are going to be giving you advice to get onto the program as well. Um, so that's all we have time for, for this evening. It's been in just an hour, but I think it's been a quite fun, quite engaging. Um, a lot of tips have been, sh have been shared. Yes, this is going to be recorded. I'm going to spend some time um, editing it quickly and making sure that it's on our YouTube channel. So make sure that you subscribe. Um, I'm seeing all of the thank yous and seeing all of the thumbs up um, so from myself, from Sita, from Aisha. Um, we're part of a collective here with the ST Buddies, SCP Buddies Network. Um, thank you, guys. Thank you for all of the trainees actually re responding in the comment section. Um, I've, I've seen all of that and I appreciate a lot. Um, expect a lot more from the SCP Buddies Network. Um, we are the network that's just focused from a student to student perspective, actually telling you and showing you this is how it's really like to be on the SDP. And um, these are young people actually becoming the scientists of tomorrow. So, Rebecca, thank you for your time. And well, do you have you any last me. words? Um, just feel free to always ask me questions in like, DMs on Instagram about clinical biochem. I'm always happy Excellent. to help. Yes, we like questions. At the STP Bodies Network, we like questions as well. We're all friendly faces. Um, so when we have time, we will respond to them. Uh, so, guys, thank you very much and take care. Thank you very much. See you later. Thanks.